how to wire a WeatherTrack Flow 3 with a photodiode onto your two-wire path. The WeatherTrack Flow 3 gets its name because the device has three features in one, a flow sensor, a master valve, and a water meter. The Flow 3 is available with either a normally open or normally closed master valve, as well as an option of the type of register you want to use, either a photodiode or a reed switch. Today's training will focus on installing a Flow 3 photodiode onto a WeatherTrack 2-wire controller when the Flow 3 uses the 2-wire path to communicate back to the controller. Let's begin with a quick examination of the Flow 3 hardware. When you pull the Flow 3 out of the box, the first thing you'll see is the register. You flip the cap up and you'll see the register that will allow an on-site irrigation professional to see water usage accumulating during normal irrigation. Other things you're going to want to pay attention to are first the wire coming from the top of the meter head. These are your flow sensor wires and if you have three wires in this multi-strand you have a photodiode flow sensor. If you only have two then you're looking at a reed switch. Then the black box on the side of the flow three is the master valve solenoid on the side of the sensor. You'll see that it has the two valve wires coming from the solenoid. And then other things to pay attention to are the three-way selector switch, as well as the solenoid bypass selector switch right here at the base of the solenoid. Also packaged in with the Flow 3 photodiode will be this power supply box. Inside the little white box, you'll find the Flow 3 power supply. This can be set aside as it's not a required component to install a photodiode onto a two-wire path. It's only used in a direct wire application. Instead, whenever adding a flow sensor onto your two-wire path, you're going to need a specialized decoder called a flow decoder. And the flow decoder is designed to add those features right onto your two-wire path. And on this, you'll have everything you need for either a photodiode or any other compatible flow sensor. Another thing that's nice to have handy when you're doing this wiring project is this wiring diagram that shows you how the flow decoder wires to the controller, the flow sensor, as well as the required grounding rod. When beginning the project of wiring a photodiode flow sensor into your two-wire path in your valve box, You'll have the WeatherTrack Flow 3 photodiode. You'll have your two-wire path. You'll also have a valve decoder for your master valve and a flow decoder for your flow sensor, as well as the supply of DBY wire nuts. It's important to remember that the Flow 3 is both a flow sensor and a master valve, and that's the reason for the two decoders. Our first step is going to be to wire both of these decoders into the two-wire path. So we take the blue wires from the master valve decoder, and the blue wires from the flow decoder. Take one of each and wire it into the blue path and then insert all of those wires into the gel cap. And then we'll take the other blue wire from each and wire it into the red path. Wire nut them all together and then insert all of these into the gel cap. When using the DBRY wire nuts, it's important to make sure that the wire nut goes all the way to the end of the gel cap and make sure that the gel inside covers the end of the wire nut to seal out any moisture or any other contaminants that might affect the connection. It's also important to make sure that the end of the cap is sealed tightly shut and snaps tight to further protect the connection. And once we've hooked up both sets of blue wires to the two leads on our two wire path, we're going to take the two black wires from our master valve solenoid and connect them to the two white wires on our master valve decoder. And once those are all connected and sealed up, our master valve is successfully wired to the two wire path and all we have left is the flow sensor. This is when we get out the wiring diagram. If you notice the clear or translucent wire on the flow sensor wires to the red wire on the flow decoder. The bare copper on the photodiode wires to the black wire on the flow decoder and the yellow wire on the photodiode wires directly to the green wire on the flow decoder. So if I zoom in on the wire coming from the photodiode flow sensor, you'll see that I have a clear or transparent wire, a bare copper wire, and a yellow wire. And just like in the wiring diagram, we take the three wires from our flow decoder and we attach the red to our translucent or our clear wire. We attach the black wire to the bare copper and we take the green wire from the flow decoder and attach it to the yellow wire from the photodiode. 
Then we put all three connections in the gel caps to make sure they're nice and watertight. And once you've wired the flow sensor into the flow decoder, the final step is to attach your flow decoder to an earth ground. That's a nearby grounding rod, grounding plate, or cold water return pipe. So we finish off the wiring project by taking these two green and yellow wires from the flow decoder and running them to a grounding source. For more details on grounding specifications, check out our Understanding Grounding training at the HydroPoint University store at hydropoint.learnupon.com. And once we've got both our master valve and our flow sensor wired to the two-wire path using a station decoder and a flow decoder, there's just a few steps left before we're ready to program the weather track, and test the controller's ability to measure flow. So the next thing we want to do is a specific piece of programming for managing a point of connection on the two-wire path. With the default settings, the weather track will always expect the flow sensor and master valve to be directly wired to the controller. So, when putting the flow sensor and master valve on the two-wire path, we need to program the software to look for those components on the two-wire path. To do this, we go to our flow menu and then forward arrow one click brings up our select flow option question. It will default to points of connection. Then using the plus button we can scroll through all of the different options on select flow option until we get to two wire. You'll only see this two wire option on a two wire controller. When we see that we push the forward arrow one time and this allows us to select whether our master valves or flow sensors are direct installation or two-wire installation. So with my cursor under M1 or master valve 1, I hit the plus button to change that from DI to 2W. And then using the forward arrow, I'll take my cursor under F1 or flow sensor 1 and change that from DI to 2W. If you have multiple points of connection on this two-wire path, you'll need to make all the corresponding changes. It's also nice to know that with WeatherTrack, you can mix and match both direct wire and two wire installations on a single controller. The last thing we want to cover in this training is to prepare the Flow 3 to ensure that it will properly communicate with the WeatherTrack controller. All right, so on a photodiode flow sensor, while we're looking in the valve, we want to make sure that the photodiode is covered or the, the valve cover is closed because that photo selector switch is using the light so any light pollution will affect the reading of the flow sensor. So whenever you want to use the flow sensor make sure the cover is closed. Over here we have the three-way selector switch. Uh, there's three different positions on the dial and you can either have it on open, closed, or auto. And Auto is the position that you want if it's running from the controller. And then down here we have the solenoid selector switch. Uh, and it can either face the solenoid or face the three-way selector switch. We always want the solenoid to face the three-way selector switch. This is the activated position. So make sure that this little guy is facing the three-way selector switch. Once you've wired up the flow decoder and the master valve decoder and programmed the weather track to listen for those devices on the two wire path, you're ready to move to the next step where you program in that flow sensor and start to learn flow. Remember the keys to success in wiring a photodiode on your two wire path are using the available wiring diagrams and using the flow menu to program the devices that will be listening to the two wire path. And finally, make sure all of those valve switches are in the correct positions so we know that the Flow 3 is listening and responding to the commands from the controller. And always remember that the only way to test whether a flow sensor is properly installed is to see the controller accurately measure flow.